Howdy folks, this here's Justin at Metcalf Mills. Today we're going to be doing one of my favorite fall activities. I know I say that a lot, I guess because I got a lot of them, but we're going to be shucking some corn. And I'm going to show you how that's done and, and tell you a little bit about it, what I know. I hope you enjoy it. Now here in the mountains, corn was probably the most important crop that was grown or growed <laughs> because they, they used it for feed for their animals, like yellow corn is what they mostly used for feed, and uh, white corn what they call bread corn that's what they use for their cornmeal make cornbread and they cooked something something like a morning porridge they called it mush cornmeal mush and they'd eat that too and cornbread i mean it was a daily thing here in the mountains and the way this worked after you harvested your corn and hauled it in, like we've done here, you pile it up under a crib shed. And the crib shed is just a, a little building with a, a pointed roof. And on one side of it, about three or four feet wide, it's got a corn crib. And that's just a room with slats on it about two inches apart all the way up and down so it gets plenty of airflow in there and they made them they built them out of logs before that they built their cribs out of logs before they had a way to saw lumber but the way they done it they hauled that corn in unloaded it under that biggest half of the building it was just a, a roof over top and it was open under there and the cribs on one side of it they'd haul all their corn in there and unload it under that crib shed and they'd have a big old pile of corn under there piled up then they'd put the word out that it's gonna have a corn shucking because everybody knows what was going on because everybody growed their corn and everybody had to get it shucked. So all the neighbors around and friends and family, they'd get together and have a big corn shucking. And everybody would sit around and shuck corn. And when they'd shuck a ear up the top in, inside of the building, you know, it was it was open in there. And the roof was real steep. All the old roofs on old buildings mostly was real steep because it they used them old split shingles and boards. They'd split out of oak to cover them roofs and they wanted them steep so that rain would run off fast and not set on them. So you had a big old steep roof and it was open in there and up the top of the crib they had a big old long door that they could open. And they'd throw their corn up after they shucked it. They'd throw it up in there in that door and it'd come down in the crib and it'd just pile up in there <coughs> and sometimes I've heard them talk about I don't know if anybody around here ever done it but sometimes they'd hide a jug <coughs> in that pile of corn and uh people would shuck real 
people would shuck real fast to get to that jug. And then after it was over, I guess they'd have a kind of a party, you know, and everybody would get them a little swig. and <coughs> Just depends on whose corn shucking it was, I guess, if they had a jug in it or not. And another thing they'd do on their corn cribs, when they got the room framed, framed up with a scantling wall, they'd come on the outside of it and get hardware cloth after they could get that, after they could buy that, they'd get that hardware cloth and wrap the whole building in that hard, quarter inch hardware cloth and then they'd put their slats over top of the hardware cloth. So you'd have a framed wall, and then you'd wrap it with hardware cloth, and then you'd put your slats over that. And that way, no rats or nothing couldn't get in there to bother their corn. <clears throat> and then every week, they'd go to the crib and get them ever how much corn out they needed to for that week's cornmeal. And they'd take the corn to the house and everybody would gather around and shell corn. And I guess they'd done that on maybe Friday evening or something. Because most of the time they went to the mill on a Saturday. So they'd gather around everybody would shell their corn for the week. And they'd put it in a sack and take it to the mill on Saturday. And get it ground up into cornmeal. That's what they done. That's how they lived. And if it wasn't for corn, I wouldn't care to say that we wouldn't be here. Because they, they just absolutely survived on it. They absolutely survived on it. these corn shucks after they would pull them off they, a lot of times they would save them and they would tear them into strips about an inch or two wide and they would twist them strips up real tight and weave chur bottoms out of them and i'm going to show you right here this chur bottom right here that's corn shucks right there they're twisted Twisted into a tight strand. And they weaved them. And just to tell you how good they held up, this chur right here was made by one of Madison County's best, in my opinion, chur makers. Now he died, I think, 1972 or 1973, one of the two. And his wife, she was the main chur bottomer. And I'm pretty certain that she bottomed this chur, and I think she died 1965. So if that tells you anything, this chur bottom's over 50 year old. And I don't see but one little spot right there where it's a little bit loose in the twist. Right there. But that right there is a corn shuck bottom. You can see under the bottom here. Somebody put some glue or something on there before I got this chair to hold them. I guess they had fell down a little bit, but you can see they was a real art to doing this. And you can see how good it looks. And we may try that sometime in the future. I got a good buddy that does it, and he does a beautiful job. And these chairs are something that I hope to do a video on here before long because they're they're a real treasure to me, and I'm it's real, real history in these chairs right here. But that's what it is, a corn shuck bottom. When I was 16 years old, I growed a patch of corn with my horse. My workhorse, Bonnie. I, I growed a patch of corn with her and cultivated it with her and... It was almost an acre of corn I growed. I was 16 years old. 
I had that buggy, I'd ride up and down the road in my horse and buggy, and I growed that patch of corn, <coughs> and that was the year, <coughs> that was the year 2000. In the year 2000, I growed that big patch of corn with my horse, and I had a big corn shucking that fall. There's a lot of friends come, and we shuck corn, and had a good old time, but something I won't ever forget. We may do it again one of these days. I'll show you this little thing that people used to use to break a shuck on the ear of corn. It's just a little wooden peg. And it's got a piece of leather there. And the leather's got a hole in each end. And it's notched so that that leather can't get off of it. And you just push this into the leather and it'll stretch enough to get on there. What you do with that little peg is you slip it on your fingers like that. And get your ear of corn. And you take that pointy end and you break that shuck with it. See there? And you can open it up a lot easier. This makes it a lot quicker and easier to get into a big ear of corn like that. If you've got that... That little shucking peg. And that's how we that's how we shuck a ear of corn. Split that shuck, open it up. A lot of these ears are short because I didn't use no fertilizer on this corn. Just cover crop and some uh, stuff that I had was not a chemical. It was just kind of organic like stuff that I used on it. Didn't use much of that. Didn't use that on all of it, just a little bit of it. <clears throat> but that's how we shut corn here in the mountains. Break that shut, split it back. What's well, some pretty corn in it? Pretty orange colored stuff. Look at that. Looks like decoration corn, don't it? Ornamental corn. Pull that back like that right there. Hang that thing up somewhere where you can look at it. Make a right pretty decoration. Another one of my favorite fall of the year things to do is shuck corn. I really enjoy it. It makes me think about a lot of things back in the olden days and how everything was. And I really enjoy it. And when this stuff, when I get this stuff dried out good, we'll mill some of it and you can see what pretty cornmeal and grits it makes. This variety right here is called Jimmy Red. Folks, this here's Justin at Metcalf Mills. I hope you've enjoyed this corn shucking video. I sure did enjoy sharing it with you. And I appreciate every one of you that watches my channel. Takes time out of your life to watch what I'm doing here. I hope it's a blessing to you. Hit that like button if you will. Subscribe if you ain't already. 
and I look forward to seeing you next time.